I love eliciting a collective cringe mm -hmm. in, in, in the audiences. It's powerful. It, it is powerful. Domi Shi, the director of Turning Red. Hi, I'm Jenny Han. I am the creator and showrunner of The Summer I Turned Pretty and the upcoming Exo Kitty. To see you um, again. I know, and that's right. Like, it is again. I know. No, Wait, we tell our while. story? It's been a, yeah, yeah, go, go, go. It was, for, for yeah, you tell it. Too. Oh, yeah. It was like four or five years ago. I had won the Academy Award for my short film, Bow. I was at the Vanity Fair after party, and I was awkwardly shuffling my way onto the dance floor, and then I bump into Jenny. And Lana Condor. Yeah, and Lana Condor. And I was like, oh my gosh, congratulations. I love the movie. I love you guys. And, we, and then you let me hold the... Yeah, I was like, here, take it. I was like, oh my God, it's so Hold heavy. it. Take a picture with it. That's, you deserve it. <laughs> gosh, how many years ago was that now? Like four, four years ago. What? Like... So much has changed. Yeah. Both of us have made, I mean, you've made a whole season. Of I've a, made a whole season. Now I've made two seasons. Two seasons? Well, the second one hasn't come out yet. Yeah. And then I also have the other show, Exo Kitty. So Exo yeah, Kitty. I've, I've now made three seasons Dang. of television. Live action is so fast. I'm amazed. I, yes. Yes. It's like in the span of you making three whole seasons of shows, I've made one movie, one 90 minute animated movie. It was, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Female characters coming of age, what is so awesome about that genre? Because I, I love it. That was my whole reason for making Turning Red, was to have this opportunity to like work on a movie of, about an Asian girl coming of age. I think that it's such a fertile time, mm -hmm. really rich with experience. And I think when you're experiencing things for the first time, mm -hmm as a storyteller, that's an exciting thing to write about. Yeah. You know, because I remember my first times, but the middle stuff gets a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. The, they really stay with you. And I think it's part of why I love telling stories about young people, because movies that you watch, the books that you read, they really stay with you your whole life, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so I watched um, Turning Red with my little nephews, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be with them their whole life. They're gonna like have that memory. It's really like a core memory. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very special. I think it's an honor to be able to tell stories um, about young people and for young people. I also feel like there's a sense of like wish fulfillment for that teen version of myself. Mm. I, I don't know if you felt that way about to all the boys where like for me, it was like I never got to go to a boy band concert. I never got to be like this loud, boisterous, you know, messy, hairy creature that our main character May embraces and becomes. And I kind of wanted to use the movie as a way to fulfill all of the the things that I wanted to do and to be as a tween. I don't know if you felt that way too about no, Well, that. no, I mean, I don't think so because, so I started out as a um, young adult author. Right. So I've been telling stories about young people my whole career. Yeah. And I guess it doesn't, for me, it doesn't feel like wish fulfillment because some things are sort of taken from my real life. Like the inspiration for To All the Boys mm -hmm. was like the letter writing, which I did. But oh. I never sent those letters. Oh, you never sent them? No, and no one ever sent them for me. It was just like for me. Nice. So it's more of kind of, I think, less about wish fulfillment for me and more of like, what if? What if? Um, yeah. And then what? It's like, you know, you have a kernel of an idea for something and, but then what's the next part? Like, right. what's like the spin on that? True. That's a, that's a really good point for me. In a similar vein, uh, in our movie, Maylee has this secret sketchbook that she hides under her bed and she draws her horny drawings in there and I totally had that as a teenager but my mom never found it but in the movie her mom finds it so it is kind of like that, that similar like what if my mom found yeah. it went through the drawings saw and recognized one of the boys like what would she do uh, with that information it was that, like that scene was amazing that scene <laughs> like you. was so mortifying yeah. and I think that is also I would say and interestingly enough turning red obviously what you think about when you think of turning red. Yeah. But I think um, about like embarrassment, obviously, right? Yeah. And like, as a writer, that feeling of embarrassment and humiliation is, is so, um, it's one of the few emotions yeah. that I think does not like ebb or lessen over time. Yeah. It's like, if I, I can remember something I did and feel like that sharp, ah, that, that like flash of like, yeah. what did I, why did I like do that? It's why so did powerful. I say that? It's, it's so, so powerful visceral. and I think love and like anger can fade. Yeah. But that emotion I think is so tied to coming of age and adolescence yes. and um, particularly I think in being a second generation like yeah. Asian American yeah. person yeah, yeah. of like often feeling like embarrassed of like stuff with parents or like culture or this or that mm -hmm. and so 
it's an emotion I think I just like to write about. Yeah, same here. I love eliciting a collective cringe mm -hmm. in, in, in the audience. It's powerful. It, it is powerful. I remember when we first screened that um, moment in our movie where uh, May's mom like runs into the bathroom with, with like an arm full of pads and just like how everyone in the audience was just like cringing and feeling so much empathy for, for May and just how em embarrassed she must be. It's, it's such a powerful tool because it, it creates like ultimate empathy mm -hmm. for your uh, and ultimate character. like connection too. Ultimate connection. Like, everyone's felt that before. Yeah, yeah. It's What's unusual about tool. Turning Red too, I think is that it's about a, like a little bit older of a main character yeah. in a way, you know what I mean? But then little kids, really like lock on to it yeah. like my five-year-old nephew yeah so he can't relate to some of the like the older themes but like some of those emotions are still like ring true for like any age just like i relate yeah to the main character yeah yeah i think our goal was to like in this really super specific story about this chinese canadian tween dealing with magical puberty dealing with her mom like like uh, everybody of all ages and races and backgrounds can identify with just that that awkwardness of like not feeling like you fit in your body and just like like how do I make my parents happy but also how do I stay true to myself I feel like that's something that a lot of people a lot of kids just deal with um, and it's not something that you really ever like truly a hundred percent have resolution for and I think that's also why it took us a while to like find that ending as well like how do we wrap up this movie in a way that doesn't feel like too happy, too idealistic, but also leaves the audience feeling good and feeling like like hopeful that they can find resolution in their own relationships as well. Writing's hard, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> the summer I turned pretty. I haven't watched it. I know, <laughs> I know I haven't watched it, but I will. T tell me um, about it. What can it. I tell say about, about it? it. Um, about well, it. it's also coming of age. Yes. And it's a story that I started writing like well, it's like 15 years ago. So it's a really long time coming. Yeah. Um, and it's really special to me because my readers have lived with it for very long in their imaginations. Mm -hmm. um, and so they all, you know, when you read a book, I think you have a picture in your mind of the story and you kind of create that and you feel very like bonded to that yeah. idea of it. And so I really was still wanting to do something that was gonna hopefully be satisfying to the audience, but also, um, Satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. Was this your first uh, show that you showrunned? Yeah. How yes. was that? That's that's that sounds. Well, amazing. so I um, was a producer on the Twelve of the Boys films, yes. and so I learned a lot. Yeah. Um, doing that because I had not been in the Hollywood business yeah. before that point, so I was really like kind of jumping in the deep end. And then I had never written for TV before or been in a writer's room, and then I was again jumping in the deep end, yeah. co-showrunning it. Is it's it harder. It's, it's harder. It's real. It's it's hard because. I think that there's so many different aspects of show running a TV show that have nothing to do with coming up with story, you know, because yeah. it really it's like is. Managing. Yeah, it is. It is. Managing it's a people. lot of like you're in charge of like 150 people. Yeah. It's almost like your HR, you're, you know, everything you're having to like manage like disputes, or kind of collectively work on something. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. coming as being a novelist, you are writing the story alone. Mm -hmm. And then here you get to work with all these different partners, um, people who are really talented, mm -hmm. who bring their own like unique gifts to the project. What's next for you? I'm back in development at Pixar on another feature film. Uh, and yeah, and I love directing. It's creative, but also I get to like work, like you said, like with a lot of people uh, and collaborate with these artists and talented animators. Yeah, like really smart people and just make a single work. I love it. It's so rewarding, I think. I feel like we have a lot in common in that mm -hmm. sense. Yep. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, it was good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs>